And we're going to have an extraordinary scene at the U.S. Capitol because uh, traveling to the White House is not only uh, uh, the remains of President Bush, his entire family, uh, former President George W. Bush, his son Jeb, his son Neil, his daughter D Dorothy, and a whole bunch of other uh, family members. And at the U.S. Capitol is going to be arrayed the Bush cabinet from his administration, led by his close friend James Baker, who was his Secretary of State and late in his term, his White House Chief of Staff as well. Others, uh, Andy Card, uh, Colin Powell, uh, Dick Cheney will be there. The entire range of cabinet members, Lamar Alexander, who was the Secretary of Education now in the Senate, uh, they are going to be there to pay their respects. And uh, he's going to lie in state for uh, throughout the day on Tuesday. And then, of course, we have the state funeral at which President Trump, as well as former presidents, will all be in attendance. And uh, the uh, 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 former president, George H.W. Bush, is going to be eulogized by a series of speakers. That's going to be an incredibly moving moment. Uh, and, uh, John, members of both the House and Senate will be able to pay their respects uh, from uh, this evening to the former president. He, he was a former president who really embodied the kind of cross-party relationship, particularly after he lost to President Clinton, very quickly becoming close friends uh, with President Clinton. That's right. And, Wilfred, he came of age in an era where there was a lot more cross-party cooperation than is possible today. He came from a liberal Republican tradition. If he were growing up now in Connecticut uh, as the son of uh, Prescott Bush, he'd probably be a Democrat. But at that time, you had the Yankee Republicans, and he was one of them. He uh, was a transitional figure within the Republican Party. Uh, but at that time, because you had liberal Republicans and conservative Democrats, there was a lot more working across uh, party lines. and. You saw the uh, uh, President George H.W. Bush achieving a significant number of things with a Democratic Congress, revisions to the Clean Air Act, a budget deal, cleanup of the SNL crisis, the Americans with Disabilities Act, as well as uh, winning authorization for the war uh, to repel uh, Iraqi forces from Kuwait in 1991. So uh, this is somebody who has uh, inspires deep affection in both parties. There are a significant number of members, not a huge uh, number, but especially people in leadership who served uh, with uh, uh, President Bush uh, uh, in the Congress while he was president, uh, a few who served uh, uh, in Congress when he was there. And uh, this is something that um, uh, is going to be a moment for reflection for the entire capital, the entire country. Yeah, a moment of reflection and a chance to look back. You know, we've all been reading so many obituaries in the last, I don't know, 48 hours or so, John. And, and the achievements are many, foreign policy, the collapse of the Cold War, the signing of NAFTA. What stands out to you? And many of them ringing true today. What should we be thinking about? Well, foreign policy uh, first among them, that is the successful navigation of the end of the Cold War, the fall of the Berlin Wall uh, between the president, Jim Baker, his secretary of state, Brent Scowcroft, his national security advisor. They masterfully handled that uh, transition. Uh, you, the successful prosecution of the uh, war to repel uh, Iraqi forces from Kuwait and the decision not to proceed to Baghdad and to oust Saddam Hussein. There were people on the right who criticized that at the time. Uh, maybe some still think he should have done that, but it uh, seems to me as if history has probably vindicated his decision rather than the decision of his son to go on and uh, uh, launch that war uh, against Saddam Hussein and oust him from power. That uh, H.W. Uh, Bush was trying to avoid the very complications and costs. Uh, terrible burdens, casualties that uh, we actually encountered in that situation. So that's uh, foremost. But on the economic front, I think you can't underestimate, or can't overestimate rather, the significance of that budget deal in 1990 that he struck with Democratic leaders in Congress. <laughs> they gave spending cuts. He raised the tax rate. That began to bring those massive deficits down came down still further under Bill Clinton, and we ended the 1990s with an economic boom and a budget surplus. Uh, that was uh, George H.W. Bush, who renounced his No New Taxes pledge and set the stage for that happening.